Hi everyone, it's Marta here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome everyone who's here for the first time and those who are here every single time I post some new video. Uh, today I would love to share a new project as part of my Dusty Attic uh, design team. Uh, it's a company, manufacturer from Australia that produces uh, beautiful beautiful chipboards so today I would love to show you how to decorate and alter your mini album cover uh, this could be as well used for a journal cover a book cover a calendar planner cover anything you wish uh, I'm gonna do a mini album cover and I hope you will enjoy this uh, so let's start As you can see, uh, I started by choosing some focal point. In this case, uh, my focal point will be this beautiful, delicate and detailed chipboard frame. As you can see, you need a craft knife for most of the chipboards to uh, release your uh, chipboard from the whole from the whole piece. And uh, the reason for that. Uh, is that in the transport we need to make sure that none of the chipboard is broken, none of the piece is uh, destroyed. So that's why, in few, that's why in few places you have your chipboards attached and you need to cut it off with your uh, craft knife. Sometimes with very detailed chipboards it may take a little bit more time but we will get there eventually. So here is the frame, beautiful frame and I'm choosing uh, more chipboards uh, I want to find something for the side of my of my album again the best way to release your chipboard is to use a craft craft knife and make sure that uh, underneath it you have some cardboard or a craft mat that you can cut it with no problems I love this circle uh, and I, I would even keep it like that but for some reason I felt I want the frame to be empty uh, so I decided to get rid of that circle but keep it if you have that chipboard keep it because the circle can be used in many other many other ways my next step is to gesso uh, my chipboard to prime it uh, I'm using white gesso from Finovar uh, Art Basics and Prima marketing and the reason for that is I want to make sure that when I will start uh, covering it with color it will hold and it will be uh, bright enough to uh, be able to catch up the color to pick up the color uh, and it's gonna be just very delicate and romantic color because uh, that's the kind of intention that I had for that particular album My next step is to color uh, the chipboard and I'm choosing Lindy Stamp Gang sprays and I'm going for pinkish, orangey, salmon, uh, peachy kind of colors, very delicate, very soft uh, to make sure that all of it will be very uh, romantic looking. A little bit of dirty pink as well. The chipboards are ready, so now is the time to do some background work. I decided to use a, a texture paste and stencil from Dusty Attic. I absolutely love this stencil, it's the script stencil. Really delicate design and perfect for a romantic, shabby chic uh, backgrounds 
for the for those very delicate romantic designs. As you can see, I also uh, decided to add some texture on the side of my mini album. The side is quite big, so I think decorating it is just gonna make it even nicer. My next step is to add the chipboards, and this is the moment where we decide about our focal point, where it will be, uh, how our composition will, will look like. As you can see, I'm adding my chipboard uh, while the modeling paste, paste is still wet, uh, but still I need some glue to make sure that uh, all the little detailed elements are attached. And I'm using a uh, gloss varnish from, uh, from Dusty Attic. Now it's the time where you decide about your embellishments, where you want to put them, what sort of elements you wish to add to your composition. And this is only a trial. This is just to see how the color looks like, how the composition presents. And this is just a trial just to put things here and there. And yet I went for different colors, more pinkish. And I'm using some beautiful little flowers from Dusty Attic. I absolutely adore, uh, adore them. And this is a shabby cheek uh, resin set from my dear friend Katty. I got a gift some time ago, a huge box filled with craft goodies, and I'm happy to use her her piece today. And I'm pretty sure she will be happy to see uh, her craft goodies used in my in my make. Again, I'm trying out. I, I, I'm taking a look where things will look good, will they look good. And this is just a, like a learning curve for me as well along the way as I go. Uh, and this is how I always work. I kind of check and see and if I, I'm in love with something, then yeah, wait, let's, let's add it, let's stick it. I'm using 3D matte gel. Why do I use gel medium instead of hot glue gun? The answer is very simple. Gel medium is that type of medium that will always hold and last and nothing will fall. Especially the very heavy object, like this resin is quite heavy. Um, glue gun, it's great, I absolutely love it. Many times use it, it's very fast because it dries straight away nearly. But after time, especially with the plastic metal heavy objects many times it happened that uh, my pieces will falling falling down from my project and it's because of the gel medium would be more flexible where uh, glue gun a uh, glue dries a uh, very hard so there's no flexibility and it's a bigger chance for something to fall uh, so yes, I'm using gel medium here as well 
with the flowers and other embellishments just to make sure that my composition will will last basically and again I'm trying here and there different elements uh, because building composition is all about trying and trials and see where things look good with what element uh, so that's that's a process it takes time to create a nice composition that you will love uh, but it's manageable and it's a matter of practice you just have to keep on trying and check in different elements maybe sometimes find some old pieces that you forgot about and then it will surprise you how pretty uh, that looks like I love building composition and checking out and trying different elements because this is the moment where we create something very special and l seeing uh, how the creation comes to life it's such a joy and I absolutely love it and I love going back to similar things sometimes like butterflies recently are in probably every single project recently why do I use them? I don't really know. That's what I do. <laughs> and this time it could not be different. The butterfly is just amazingly perfect for that uh, composition and it's my focal point as you can see. Uh, so I absolutely love it. Um, and I'm keep on adding my flowers, my embellishments and I'm gluing everything with uh, 3D gel medium you can use as well heavy body gel medium uh, a new thing on the market from Fenavar Prima uh, it's same idea but it's just the body of it it's it's so heavy uh, it's like nearly like a Vaseline it's like this really sticky thing so basically it just holds straight away straight away <laughs> you would love it As you can see I'm moving my flowers and uh, that's the beauty of gel medium it doesn't dry straight away so you can move your elements and move your, move them around in case you don't like something or you want to, or you want to change it or maybe add it or swap the place with another embellishment so that's the beauty and great thing about gel medium that you can do it if you would glue gun it you couldn't move your elements whatsoever. I'm using now a 3D foam to raise my butterfly a little bit so it will stand out on my project. Uh, I have those two cute brats, uh, they're a gift again from Katty uh, and I think they will just uh, look nice on this project so I'm gonna find some special place for them and, and glue them to my make. Now as my uh, finishing touches I have some more brads and those are kind of glassy brads. I'm trying to get rid of that metal elements because I never use them as brads really. I usually 
get rid of the the metal bit or I just hide it underneath it and just glue it as embellishment uh, and that's what I always nearly do I use brats as my gems as my uh, cute elements uh, oh one for the, <laughs> the gel medium we have to get an, another one happy accidents always uh, in my case this time I just cut it off because it was annoying me the metal bit so I cut it off the metal bit and I'm just using this as my beautiful gem embellishment to my project Uh, I love adding special elements like this uh, little uh, pinky uh, glittery bread from Katy. Uh, I find that when you are using pieces that someone gave you, it just makes it all so special because those are one in kind things uh, and those are quite old I believe and I'm really happy that I can give a second life to those. To those beauties. Few more gems, few more tiny embellishments that will just it will just make it and give a closure uh, to the to the project. That's that's what I think. Being a perfectionist in mixed media world is hard because if I'll see a little bit of glue sticking out where it shouldn't be, I'm gonna just get rid of it, I'm gonna clean it. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's hard uh, because mixed media is all about being dirty and uh, arty and splashing there splatters there uh, so I, I'm, I'm a mixed media clean person I think and um, yeah so I had to clean this little gem because a little bit of glue was sticking out a little bit of gel medium so I had to have that out now I'm adding some white gesso I'm brushing uh, white gesso into my elements it's called uh, dry gesso brush uh, so you can just do it on your finished project to highlight the elements it just gives uh, extra depth into your project and trust me it makes a difference maybe camera is not picking it up fully uh, but trust me it makes a difference it just the special little touches to your project to highlight the elements to just give that depth and special feeling about about your make so make sure that your brush is quite dry that's why I'm using the lid because I don't want too much gesso to go on my uh, on my brush so it's really dry dry gesso brushing on top gently smudging it gently touching your your elements I'm dipping the brush a little bit a little bit then I'm taking off the axis on my uh, cover of the jar and I'm making sure that I have just the right amount of gesso on my on my brush
Now it's time to add uh, the resin on the side of, of the mini album and I'm using a gel medium once again to make sure it will just stay in its place uh, and it will just be there forever. <laughs> Uh, a sharpie is something that you really uh, should or could have. It's this uh, fabulous marker uh, with the white awesome coverage with this fine tip. And I'm using it for the splashes. I'm not sure if you can see it. But trust me, there are some splashes on the background. Very delicate. Uh, I also use Posca pen, white Posca pen often. The splashes are bigger. Uh, for some reason I picked up the, po the sharpie first, so we have very tiny, tiny, uh, tiny splashes. I absolutely love it and I think it's a perfect way to, to add interest to your project. And next step is the liquid pearls. Again, those who, knows me, who know me, uh, they do know that I use liquid pearls oftentimes to finish off my layouts, my cards and now we're gonna just highlight the beauty of chipboard as well i love uh, liquid pearls and i use them since i started card making so they were very first things uh, that i purchased when i started my journey and i still use them i absolutely love that product i have to say you do get the perfect pearls unless you're the bottle is nearly finished and it's harder to squeeze but the color is beautiful the the shape of pearls is fantastic and it's a great way to add interest to add special little features to your project to every project whether it's card album journal uh, layout scrapbook layout it doesn't matter you can do you can do it uh, to all your projects. Uh, before I turned flip around my my uh, my my, jar, my my album, I made sure that my liquid pearls from the uh, first uh, part were dry uh, because I don't want the pearl to move down and to have wrong shape. So I dried that first and then I did uh, I did I did the side of my of my album. So here is our finished mini album. It's six by six size. I absolutely love that size, a perfect mini size. Um, you can create a piece like that for yourself and then you can alter the pages inside and decorate them with different papers, embellishments and stamping and add your favorite photos or you can give this as a gift for someone. I think it's a perfect, perfect idea. I absolutely love it. Uh, if you loved the video, if you found it inspirational and if you uh, wish your friends to see it, please make sure to share the video uh, on your social media. It's a great way to show the support for my work and for the videos that I do for you. Uh, I take big joy. I have a big joy making the videos for you and I'm glad you're loving them, sharing them and giving me thumbs up and all the comments. So thank you all so much for watching and I will definitely talk to you very, very soon. Have a great weekend. Bye!